Hey everyone, and welcome to this DMA how-to video, where we'll be exploring some more of Maya's functionality and abilities in short format lessons. My name is Austin Broder, and I'm an instructor over the summer with DMA. In this lesson, we'll expand on some more ways to improve your animation abilities and techniques. If you haven't been in DMA's Introduction to Animation summer course, I highly suggest you try signing up. It's highly informative and will help you set you up for success in animation. However, you can figure out a lot of this on your own with some basic knowledge and a lot of practice. Well, let's start off by reviewing some of the basic tools in animation. Select the animatable object, whether it's a polygonal mesh or a NURBS curve controller, and select the initial frame, then decide on your pose, then set a keyframe. Now to set a keyframe on all the keyable attributes, you can press S. But if you want to be a little more specific, you can actually uh, set keyframes on specific values by using Shift W to set translate keyframes, Shift E for rotate keyframes, and Shift R for scale. Now let's explore some more advanced tools that can benefit our animation. We'll start off with talking about animation layers. So in this file, I have this walk cycle, and I decide I want to layer in a little extra animation. And in this case, I want to layer in him looking around while he's walking. Instead of having to change my original animation where I've already set down keyframes specifying how I want his head to bob, I can switch my layers menu from display tab to the animation tab. Then with the head control selected, I can click the button with the circle, which is to create new layers with selected objects, which is our head control in this case. Now we have a new animation layer on our head control. This makes it much easier to layer in a little more detailed motion without having to counter animate or interfere with the original animation we have there. I'll layer a quick animation of him looking around and now I have an additional layer of detail on my animation. Now what's extra cool about this is that it also provides a little bit of extra control. Just like in Photoshop, you can control the opacity of this layer. So if you'd like to blend this into your animation a little bit more, you can try lowering or adjusting the opacity. So another really useful thing to know is that you can create your own custom shelf with all the buttons or, or tools that you used often. Uh, up here in the top, go to your custom toolbar. Now we can add our own uh, scripts if you know how to write code. Uh, specifically we use Mel or Python for Maya and you can actually pull up the script editor and just kind of copy and paste anything that it echoes back if you want to try creating something custom. However, we can make some of these tools that are hidden in these menus more readily available by going up to wherever the tool is and hovering your mouse over that tool press control shift and then when you click on that button it's going to add it to your custom shelf now you have access to these uh, buttons and tools more readily available you can also use the capability in Maya called motion paths um, this helps us uh, visualize our, our animation arcs a little easier and may make animation a little more visual for you which is always helpful if you select a mesh or a control and activate a motion path which is right here, Maya maps out its movement in 3D space using a curve with annotations for where each keyframe is as well. This can be really useful in visualizing your arcs, which is one of our 12 animation principles. I use this to help visualize the movement of my root control and my wrist movements pretty often, but there are reasons to use this on anything that you'd like help visualizing uh, its arc to create a smoother movement. Now let's get into some really cool but complex ideas. Uh, we can utilize some ideas of rigging to help us deform our mesh to enhance our animations and give us control wherever we need it. Now, I wouldn't suggest going overboard with this. It is easy to fall into a mindset of focusing on details when you should be watching for the overall animation. For example, the arcs that our motion paths help visualize. But if there's an important shot that you want to exaggerate or you need to fix something subtle, uh, this could be extremely powerful. Now, important note, we only use deformers once we're completely done with our animation. This is for polish. Now each deformer has a different set of rules as to what will help you make it work. So it's important to note how to apply and interact with them because they can screw some things up. So it's a good time to save out a new version and also save new versions often. Since we're limited in time, I'll go over two very powerful deformers, the lattice deformer and the cluster deformer. You'll have to switch to the rigging set menu to find these under deform. Let's start with a lattice. A lattice deformer creates a cage around the object you apply it to and when you move its components around, which are lattice points, you will bend and deform the mesh within it. This is a great way to apply a huge cartoony deformation to the whole object. Now to the rules of how to interact with this. Just like we don't animate on the vertices of our model, we don't animate the lattice points themselves. When we want to animate this, we'll have to incorporate our other deformer, the cluster. 
Now the cluster deformer takes whatever components are selected and creates a single cluster control. This is perfect for what we're going to do, so select the lattice points you want and create a cluster deformer. Now we can animate on the cluster. So now that we understand what a cluster deformer is, we can try using it in a different way. Since it's creating a single control for many components, let's use it to animate a change on our model. Select all the vertex you want affected and maybe grab a few extra and create a cluster deformer. Now when we move our cluster, it moves all of those vertex, uh, but it moves them all equally and it's not very smooth or appealing. So let's take a look at how we can improve on this. If you select the affected mesh in object mode, you can go to modify paint attributes tool. If this doesn't open up the tool settings tab, you can go ahead and do that manually. Now we can see on our model that it's color coded and where there's white, the cluster is controlling 100% of those components or vertices in this case. We can soften up the edges by switching our paint operations to smooth and using the flood button five or six times, whatever's necessary. Then switch back to your selection tool by pressing Q. Now try moving around the cluster and you'll see that it's much smoother and you can animate a slight additional deformation on your character or object. Awesome, try experimenting around with this. This is really powerful tools. Now there's many other very useful scripts and tools that are available even for free online. And you can find some of them on websites like Creative Crash or on uh, one of my favorites is Tool Chefs who have many very cool tools available for you. Uh, one of them, one of which is a, a variation on the, the lattice case that we looked at, which is a, a camera-based lattice, kind of like a, a liquify tool for your Maya scene. There's also advanced skeleton, which is what's called an auto rigger. So if you know nothing about rigging, but you modeled a really cool character and you want to animate him, you can use advanced skeleton to create a rig so you can animate that character. Uh, all of these things may take a little bit of time to figure out, but they have some pretty good documentation. And if you read up a little bit, it'll help you figure out how to use them. I hope this gives you a lot more things to work with and expands your ability as an animator. If you create something cool and you want to share it, please do. We always love seeing what you guys work on. My name is Austin. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Keep on creating.